Hey folks, coming to you on a rainy Monday morning as we continue our discussion about self-control. And what discussion of self-control would be sufficient without talking about how do we instill self-control in the lives of our children? Well, I want to remind you first of all that the first cause of all things is the person of Jesus Christ. Self-control is a result of the fruit of the Spirit, a result of the working of the Holy Spirit in our lives. So we must always start with the person of Jesus Christ. But secondly, uh, we were gathering on our devotional table this morning, and I shared from Psalms 119, verse 18. And there the psalmist says, Open my eyes, that I may see the wonderful things of your law. Now, may I suggest to you, most Christians don't put the law and wonderful in the same chapter, let alone the same verse. Yet in God's economy, he understands the law is wonderful. I would suggest, number one, that we teach our kids, that we share with our kids a vision of self-control and the beauty of following God's law. Uh, Psalms 119 uses the word law, uh, commandments, statutes, precepts. These are good things. God has created us in such a way that when we walk in His Spirit, when we walk according to His character, we interact in our culture in a very mutually beneficial way. And so we want to give our kids a vision that when we walk in self-control, that is a good thing. That is a godly thing. Second of all, I think it's very important for us to teach our kids that sin feels good. Right? Sin feels good for the moment. Then after that, it produces a, a, a life of heartache and brokenness. I see some parents who are so afraid of sin that they just say it's all bad and trying to scare their kids. Will their kids go off to school or are separated from their parents and they experience sin and it feels good? And it's like, wow, this feels good. Sin does feel good for the moment. And we parents need to teach that to our kids. That is sin's only playing card is that it feels good for the moment. Immediate gratification. Then after that, you have to pay the piper, young people. And the third thing to teach our kids is the future benefit of um, self-control. Just like sin has immediate gratification, self-control's gratification is down the road, a year, uh, five years, ten years, of course as Christians, eternity. And we have to give our kids a vision for that. What do they want their lives to be at 30, 35, at 40? Now we parents know those years come pretty quickly, but our kids don't. So we want to help create a vision of what life can be when we are uh, built upon these character trait of self-control. These discussions, I may suggest, need to be earlier than later. I think we don't think that our kids always understand all these deep truths of God, but may I suggest they probably know a lot more than we do. But also with that, I just told my son today, if you guys can start the character traits out right when you're young, you have to spend the time and the energy realigning things that are wrong. I've had to spend energy to try to get some bad habits out of my life. And I told them, if you can just have good habits, the rest of your life you have energy to spend on other things, serving God, and providing for your family. What a joy that will be. And can I suggest to you, the lessons of people who did not show self-control are all around us. From the prison to the cemetery. And there have been times when I've gone to the cemetery with my kids for one reason or another. I pointed out different tombstones that I knew that person. Here's what happened to them. I saw one tombstone of a 29-year-old man from our uh, community died years ago. He had a heart condition in his family, but he never worked out. He was always overweight. And he always smoked. Died at 29 years of age. So these examples are out there everywhere for our kids to see. So I encourage us uh, parents, let's be very intentional in teaching our kids the importance of self-control and encourage them to seek the power of God through the fruit of the Spirit to walk in a lifestyle of self-control. This is Kirk Smith with ICHEs. Take five.